Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Sport behind me. So I'm going to talk about that very briefly because uh, my Tundra, which is a 2022 Platinum, hasn't arrived yet. It was supposed to arrive here mid-December. It got delayed five times since that time. I think due to the uh, some production delay from supply chain issues and also from weather issues we're having here in the West Coast. And I guess the further you are away from the Texas factory, the longer it takes to get here. So here we are in the West Coast of Canada. Everything got delayed and just only this week, Toyota dealers are beginning to um, receive shipments of the new Tundra, such as this TRD Sport. So this one is obviously not mine, but Toyota has uh, given me the chance to drive it until such time that I finally get mine, which is supposed to be the first week of February. But there is some really interesting news about the Tundra that I'm discovering already uh, because I was speaking to Toyota officials yesterday from the corporate side and they already shared some interesting news about the Tundra that I thought I should share with you. The first thing I wanted to share with you is that there are some updates coming to the Tundra software. So that software is part of the infotainment package designed by Toyota Connected, which is a subsidiary of Toyota. These updates, by the way, is just like any other software company like Microsoft or Apple, it will continue to come throughout the year. So one of the changes that's coming is the way that the remote start will work. Nothing to do with the subscription, that's a very controversial topic. But what I meant is that right now, when you do a remote start with a key fob, you hold it uh, three times, right? We click once, click twice, hold it on the third time and engine will start. But what happens is that once the engine started, if you open the door, any door, the engine will shut down. And that's one of the big complaints that were raised by a number of uh, users and owners. So Toyota is making a change so that when you open the door, once the engine was started with the remote start, it will not shut down the engine anymore. So that's uh, coming as part of the over the air update. So that's one good news. I think there's no change in terms of the subscription program. So we still have to pay for the remote engine start after a number of years, but uh, perhaps that will change in the future too, if we continue to voice our concern. At least they made one change based on some feedback from us. And also the software itself is getting a little bit of updates so that it's a little bit more user friendly, not a huge amount of changing, but they're saying that uh, they'll continue to make changes throughout the year. So it's not uh, based on one particular user's feedback, but it's based on many people's uh, feedback. But for now, let me point out a few things. So first of all, let me do a quick uh, quality audit. As you know, I'm an automotive engineer by background. I used to manufacture and design cars and trucks for a living. So I can take a look and see how the body fit and finish is. And I'll do a proper job once again when I get my own Tundra. But for now, I just want to point out to you some body fit and finish. So the paint job is actually quite good. If you kneel down, you can see from front to back, the paint is consistent. There's not too much orange peel. There is a little bit more than I expected, but not so bad. And the gloss and the shininess and the paint surface finish is all great. It's all excellent. I don't see any uh, issue with the paint defects. But in terms of body integrity, and that's in terms of how the body panels fit together and come together overall, well, um, you know what? It's pretty good, but maybe not quite as good as what I expected, at least in this particular Tundra. This is a TRD Sport, as I mentioned. And how I check is I use a ping pong ball and uh, you just kind of gently go over the uh, body gaps to see if there's a difference in height between one panel to the next panel. And also to see if the uh, gap is consistent from the front all the way to the back. And I can tell you that uh, right here, it's very difficult to get this part right because the corners do not always align. And sure enough, this one dips a little bit lower than this side. It's hard to tell on the on this camera right now, but so it's not quite as good as the Tacoma I owned, nor is it as good as the 2021 Tundra that they have been producing for many years. Uh, so the gap is a little bit bigger than I expected. And you can see if you do the ping pong ball check, it gets stuck here. So which means this side is slightly higher than this side. We're talking about small, small fraction of a, uh, a millimeter so it's, it's still within the spec and it still meets the spec but uh, the gap is a little bit wider and also not as consistent as i thought so here if you look at the top of the panel it actually lines up really well and it's perfect alignment both sides 
and the gap is very narrow. But as you get uh, further and further down here, uh, it begins to get a little bit wider. Again, it's still within spec, but a little bit wider than what I expected. And right here, the gap begins to widen, a little bit like a river flowing into an ocean. So a little bit of a panel integration issue here. Now let's move on and take a look at the front fender versus the door. Uh, this time the alignment is actually really good. It's perfectly aligned, uh, but the gap here is a little bit wider than what I'm used to seeing. Now this is a truck after all, so it's not a big deal and it's still within the spec, but this width is a bit wider than what I expected from Toyota. Now let's take a look at the front and the rear door. The panels are actually very good here as well. Uh, again, the gap is a little bit wider than what I would expect from Toyota. Uh, but here, which is the rear door and the uh, cabin here is perfect. The gap is just perfect. I can measure this with a caliper next time when I have my own truck. Um, but right now I can tell you it's very consistent from top all the way. And you can kind of take a look here again and the panels line up perfectly from back to the front. So this is all good and the paint job once again looks excellent. All the decals looks good. The panels fit with the tail light and the body panels also look very good. I don't see any issue with this. I don't see any issue with uh, plastic molding here uh, and throughout the rear part of the truck all looks good as well. So no major issues here or here uh, and I don't see any other defects. Some people pointed out with some trim issues with the moldings. I haven't noticed anything unusual with this one. Uh, all the pieces of the plastic seems to fit well, nothing loose, uh, at least in this particular truck. The blacked out pillars looks fine as well, and the mirror fit looks good. No issues here with the plastic. So overall, the quality is good, and uh, again, the paint job is up to the standard of Toyota. Looks pretty glossy and shiny, and the molding in terms of the front and the lower bumper all looks really good. So I think quality uh, is excellent, other than maybe a little bit of a gap issue in the front. Let's take a look at the left side here, and let's see if the gap on this side is also an issue. Strangely enough, it's almost perfect on this side. Again, at this corner right here is a bit of an issue. There's always a difficult thing to do in any production. Very difficult to get these edges correct. So slightly off, but actually better on this side than that side, on the driver's side. And the gap is a little bit tighter. Uh, still, in terms of the panel alignment, uh, this side is a little bit, tiny bit higher than this side. So there's still a little bit of a, a panel alignment issue. Uh, and oh, actually here, not so good. This side is now quite a bit higher than this side, maybe like uh, a 0.2 millimeter. So I can tell by touching with my hand because that's what I was trained to do for many years. Uh, and the gap here doesn't line up also. It gets a little bit wider here and then narrower here. So this is a very difficult thing to achieve. And in an earlier production model, it might meet the specification of Toyota but it's not quite perfect yet. So over time, I think they'll continue to improve the uh, stamping, the paint, the alignment, and uh, most importantly, the welding department where they put all the panels together. I was very involved in production and manufacturing of trucks. So I know exactly how these panels come together and I know exactly what you have to do to improve these panels. So they will definitely improve that and it'll probably get much better in a couple of months or so. I'll reserve my judgment until I see my platinum and I'll do much more uh, qualitative and quantitative inspection of the truck. But for now, it passes my test with a little bit of disappointment in terms of the alignment of the panels. Now, I know there has been some concerns about uh, the length of this seat and the comfort level. I had no issue with this. Obviously, I'm not a tall person. I'm just a normal average Asian height, but uh, I actually think this is almost too long for me and plenty of support here so uh, it feels perfect and actually the side support here is quite good and better than expected. This is a TRD Sport so it doesn't come with uh, leather or leatherette, uh, soft text we call it in Toyota, uh, but it does come with a TRD package so it's got the TRD uh, steering and a red uh, line here. It's got the smaller uh, infotainment system over here. Um, and a lot more to come in terms of the driving feel and everything else once I get my own Tundra. But as you know, I've already driven the Tundra a number of times and I'm always very impressed by the overall feel of the truck. It's just absolutely quiet, super, super smooth and refined and you almost don't feel like you're driving a truck. 
Uh, it's more like driving a sort of a large SUV. That's the kind of feel I think they were going for uh, because they are aiming this at uh, people who want to use this every day and not using as a workhorse. That's sort of the target audience the Toyota is going for. So let me start the engine here. Got the nice TRD button. So now I'm inside the Tundra. Again, this one is TRD Sport and this is brand new. It just literally arrived at the dealership I deal with. And uh, so you got the welcome menu. Nothing is set up in here and uh, you have to enter your phone number and so forth later on. But you can just cancel everything and you can click do not show set up again uh, and then can you do you want to cancel this yes and it just goes back to normal uh, mode so yes there's a few buttons you have to press to overcome that but it doesn't prevent you from driving this or using the hvac control for temperature or using the radio so you don't need to worry that this thing is too difficult to use or too complex to use i know some changes are coming that will update this entire software but the way it is is totally fine even in this smaller infotainment system in my platinum i will have the larger 14 inch uh, version but even here actually i don't find it too much of a problem it's actually really bright very quick uh, easy to use uh, all the other stuff works fine here uh, by the way in terms of the steering heater which uh, a lot of people complained about it's turned on now actually i was just driving my wife's toyota rav4 prime and this is actually warmer than the rav4 prime it's not super hot and it is only uh, heated here and here that's for sure but it's actually warmer than i thought and uh, it stays warm all the way to about here it's not heated right here at the top but even here i can feel the heat and down here as well so uh, it's bigger range than i thought whereas on the rav4 prime it's literally only this section that's hot uh, but here i can feel the warmth all the way to almost the top and again it's better than expected so not to worry too much about the uh, heating problem with the steering we wouldn't need this much longer here in the west coast it's going to get warmer now uh, so that's all good and everything else here you guys have probably seen already before from my videos or other people's videos all look good the quality looks excellent i do a quick rattle check and i'll do this again in my particular uh, platinum coming through but everything feels super tight nothing loose all the panel fit of the plastic injection molding the buttons uh, all looks excellent i mean this is something that toyota does really well particularly with the way that these molding work and sometimes very difficult to get these grain correct to make it look like a real leather this is plastic obviously they take this pattern from a real leather and that's why it looks so real um, but right now i don't see any kind of gap issue from these components uh, everything looks solid uh, and so in terms of uh, trim quality fit and finish inside it's perfect i don't see any issues at all i love the red line on here my platinum does not come with a trd package so I wouldn't get some of these red line and red trims that you get which is a bit unfortunate but that's okay because my platinum will come with a whole bunch of other luxury features that are not on other trim levels and those are things i wanted to test out so looking forward to doing that once the truck arrives in about two weeks time uh, lots of space here very comfortable and overall i'm still very impressed with the tundra and very happy that i purchased one uh, just uh, a bit annoyed that it keeps getting delayed and arrival times keep shifting but that's okay it's gonna arrive eventually and perhaps the longer it takes maybe they'll get some of these uh, defects out of the way because nothing is perfect yet even for toyota so this wasn't meant for a comprehensive review but i wanted to give you a quick uh, take on what i think of the quality and the fit and finish based on this particular model which is a trd sport and then on the platinum i'm getting i'll do a full audit from top to bottom inside and out and tell you exactly what's working or what's not working with the new tundra so far it's all looking good and particularly the driving part is the best part of a new tundra it's super quiet and it's just so smooth and engine actually does kind of feel like a v8 it's not a v8 and it does have a different character the engine revs up really smoothly and turbocharger kicks in smoothly without any delay so when you step on it it goes like crazy even though this is not the hybrid version which has even more power and torque 
I also found that the new Tundra just feels more settled down, both in terms of city driving and also highway driving. It's not so bumpy like the old one. The old one is not very good over a bumpy road. It tends to oscillate after the uh, going over some of the bumps and also on the highway, it can feel a little bit unsettled but this Tundra feels really planted, kind of like a big SUV. So it's feeling less and less like a truck and more and more like a luxury SUV, which is the targeted audience for the Tundra. So there's no surprise there. But in terms of the overall quality, the ride and drive, the engine performance, the suspension, the transmission shifting, all looking very good and still first class as I expect from Toyota. So a lot more news to share with you, a lot more insight to share with you on Tundra and other Toyota models. So please look forward to that in the future videos. Thank you so much for watching again. If you can give me a thumbs up or subscribe or comment below, that'll be really appreciated. I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much again.